and I'm going to present to you on uh, the climate crisis and why it's so important uh, for travel and tourism. Mm. I want to start with a bit of context um, and how, how the climate crisis relates to climate friendly travel. Now, there's very broad scientific consensus that um, we do need to very rapidly and, and completely decarbonize our economies and ways of life as soon as possible. And this is to stay well below two degrees uh, warming by the end of this century as agreed on in the Paris Agreement. In fact, um, some parties um, have um, advocated very strongly for warming now, now more than 1.5 degrees. Um, tourism as a global industry contributes um, about 8% to global emissions. And within that, of course, aviation is one of the um, um, key sectors, but recognized as so-called hard to abate. So it's very difficult to take carbon out of aviation with current technology. So there's been uh, several studies that highlight that as other sectors uh, decrease their carbon, uh, aviation's share will increase uh, substantially. I was to take you on a little journey, if you like, um, and I've called it the quest for carbon zero or zero carbon aviation because it is a huge challenge. It's a, a, a trade-off because on the one side, as I hope I can explain to you, aviation um, provides a huge amount of benefit to society and, and, and to the world in general, but of course it comes at an environmental cost. And balancing those two things is um, is the conundrum that we're trying to deal with as we go through this. So I'm going to take you, I'm going to remind you of the scope of aviation, um, look in, in a bit more depth at what the challenge is in terms of aviation and climate change, um, look at the industry as well as government's current emissions reduction strategy and ask ourselves the questions, where are we now? Is it enough? and then really try to home in on what are the possible policy pathways going forward? What are the options that we have? And then at the end, um, uh, pick up on something that, um, that Jeffrey actually uh, initiated, which is, I think, a very uh, valuable um, way to, th to, to think about this, which is the, the so-called aviation moonshot, which, um, which uh, climate friendly travel and Jeffrey have, um, have, have, have sort of put forward. A little bit closer to, to tourism, of course, but our flights are increased by 561% the past 50 years. The meat production is increased with 65%, and yeah, the plastic soup and plastics are increased with 447%, which is enormous. Extreme weather, and then we come close to climate change. The, in, the extreme weather patterns or the, uh, the extreme weather events are increased with 44% in the past 50 years. Again, yeah, we are losing our comfort zone. If you look at CO2 emissions, 21% per person more emissions in the past 50 years. In total, 47 in total. And if you compare 50 years ago, how uh, the how much we are as a population that we see that 50 years ago we were just uh, half of the population we are now so you see the doubling here is an interesting figure to look at uh, interesting number and we have to take into account that 10 percent of the people are responsible for 50 percent of the emissions so there is no equal way how, how it is organized and how we are uh, let's say affecting um, uh, the, the planet so, is it an existential, existential crisis? Sunex believes it is, and so do I. Climate change will bring freezing, it'll bring drought, it'll be storms and floods. It will bring biodiversity extinction, and it brings pandemics. We also know that it's going to drive inequality through poverty, famine, and the consequence of that will be migration, and with migration will come war as people compete for smaller and smaller amounts of resources in a heating world and where many people will be flooded and need to leave where they live. The narrative is changing and here I refer to a book um, just recently released um, and written by Jonathan Porrett, Hope in Hell, um, a decade of emergency, although I said it's really just shrunk to a year. Um, he would argue that there is some optimism 
because of youth activism to start with, um, including the school strikes and Greta Thunberg's activity and profile, um, really challenging the existing system and the, the, the people in power, um, arguing, well, basically, we need to act now, um, otherwise it will be too late.